Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today we're going to tackle the Flesh Terrors, which are a, a second founding chapter of the Blood Angels, which I've heard described as pretty much the Blood Angels, but way angrier. <laughs> they are uh, known for their brutality and their preference for close quarters combat. Uh, they also had some unpleasantness unfold with the Sisters of Battle on Armageddon, so they're not exactly high on my list for the Christmas cards, but they are pretty cool looking. Now obviously when it comes to a chapter like the Flesh Terrors, uh, I'm not brave enough to paint the chapter badges on by hand. Um, you know, I just don't have the patience to do that. If you do want to find some transfers, uh, you can always hit up Google, and there are places like uh, My Mini Factory, uh, Thingiverse if you've got a 3D printer, or you can try Shapeways if you don't have one, and order something suitable that you can put on your own Marines, which you know will save your, your hands and your sanity from <laughs> trying to do those by hand. Now today's video is possible only because of the intervention of Alan Nuttall. And if you've heard that name before, he's actually one of the producer level patrons. And a very good friend of mine, as it happens. Now he, as well as supporting the channel financially, has decided to send me along a bunch of models, including this here Assault Intercessor, and a couple of others. So if you like what you've seen today, then thank you Alan goes in the comments. <laughs> but I'm going to list all of the paints used in the description below. So without any further mucking around, let's get started. So to begin with, I've started with priming this guy with a spray of Mephiston Red. Now it is a primer spray, so you don't need a white or a black on underneath. Um, it's a question that does come up a fair bit. No you don't, you can spray this straight onto bare plastic or metal. But that's a little bright for what we've got in mind. We want that gross red meaty armour <laughs> that the Flesh Terrors have. So I've got some corn red, and I'm just adding a little bit of water. I had some in my brush already. What we're going to do is just cover over all of the red armor. We'll see that darkens that down ugh, quite a bit already. Uh, so this won't take very long. All you want to do is give this probably one quick coat. And I'm using my large base brush for this. Uh, the wedge tip on it is really handy for getting into some of these areas. But however you decide to put it on, doesn't really matter. Let's go ahead, and once you're finished, give that a couple of minutes to dry, and we'll see what we get. Now you might see in some spots where I've actually gone over areas that are going to be black later, uh, with that corn red, but that's not going to matter because we're going to paint the black, you know. <laughs> What's important is that all of your armour is that nice deep red shade. What we'll do now is to do some dry brushing. And for this I'm going to get out some Eldar Flesh, and work it into, I've got a small dry brush here. So we'll quickly flick along the edge of his base, just to get a feel for what we're going to leave behind, and that's cool. So with this flesh colour, we're going to lightly flick along the edges of areas that we would like to edge highlight. And don't worry if you have some of these go a little bit overboard. Uh, because we can very quickly touch them back in with some corn red. But no matter how you're doing it, all you got to do now is struggle to get your, <laughs> get your miniature in the light. Just go around now and lightly pick out any areas where you want this. Oh, it's so gross. It's so gross. Now it will take you a couple of passes in some areas to build up that colour. But once you do, this is what you'll have. Now I quite like that, but I know that a lot of people prefer a more crisp finish to their Space Marines. So you can go back, thin down your corn red a little more than you would normally, and let's just take, for example, his knee pad here. This is a good spot, we can just corn red that over and get rid of that chalky finish on the edge there. I would suggest you probably don't need to do a huge amount of this. Um, you know, the, the natural effect that we're going to get from the shade in a moment is going to take care of some of that. Uh, but if you do want to tidy up a little bit of corn red now, you know, I think I'm going to pretty much leave it at that. Now, whether you decide to go ahead with that cleanup stage or not, your next step is to go ahead and shade the miniature. And for this, I've got here, this is Caraburg Crimson. I don't get to use this one very often because I don't paint a lot of red this way. However you get it though, make sure you do give a really good shake before you use it. 
And then we're just going to apply this all over the armor. Again, don't worry if you hit any bits that are going to be black later on because, well, we're going to paint them. Just make sure that you're moving this all around the model, working it into those recesses, all over those bits that we want to be red. Then we're going to leave that for about 20 to 30 minutes to dry. We'll come back and see what we get. Now once that shade is dried, you'll see what a difference it makes to the color of the armor. We get that nice modulation between uh, the highlights and the flatter areas, and we get nice deep shading. You'll see I've experimented here with a little bit of uh, Corvus Black, which unfortunately I don't think is going to quite work for what I had in mind. But what we'll do instead is I've got my medium base brush, which you can see has seen better days. <laughs> And I'm going to water down just a little bit of uh, Vallejo black. And what we'll do is use this to cover over, well, all the black areas. And on the flesh terrors, there are a lot of these. So I'm going to use my medium brush here to sort of do most of the work. But then when I get to the chest eagle and such, I'm going to switch down to my medium layer brush. But however you decide to do it, get round now and all of these black areas Fill them in with some black. Oh yeah, there's a lot of black. <laughs> now we're going to do the same thing to this armor that we did with the red, and that is to use a dry brush to pick out some highlights. Now the dry color that I'm using is actually Longbeard Gray, and you'll notice this is very bright. But we can do the same thing with this that we did the uh, red, which is if we make any mistakes, we can just go back over with a little black to tidy up. Now from here, if you do make any mistakes and you get it on the red, uh, Longbeard Grey, you can probably quite happily just get a little bit of Karaberg Crimson and darken it down again in the right color. So I'm going to go around the whole model, picking out these black areas, and we'll dry brush those up. Now the black areas you will probably want to be a little more crisp than some of the red, especially the shoulder pads. So I am going to Fill in some areas where I want a little bit more, you know, that pristine look. So just across the front of his helmet here. In any other areas, I want to be a nice flat black. Now the next stage in this, obviously, will be to shade it with Null Oil, similarly to how we did the red armor. But what I'm going to do instead is actually get my Iron Hand Steel, because we're going to paint, you know, we're going to Null Oil the metalwork too. So to save some time, let's do the metal before we shade the armor. And then we can shade it all together. So obviously up to you how much of this you want to be metal. Um, you may find that you do need to do a couple of coats in some areas. But old Iron Hand Steel actually covers really well. So you may find one quick coat, but it's up to you. Then once that's done, out comes the Null Oil. Remembering, of course, give it a really good shake before you use it. And let's just apply that all over the black and metal. Uh, if you are worried about how much you're putting on, you can, of course, use that smaller brush. Now, once that's dried, it's dulled down some of the chalkiness left over, and we have, you know, cool black and horrible meaty red armor. <laughs> if there are any areas that you do want to uh, brighten up a little bit more, so for example, on oh, this chest eagle here, just a little bit of, uh, this is administratum gray, will do the job for that. It'll probably be a little more sparing than this. Now from this stage, I'm actually going to finish the rest of them pretty much off camera. Uh, you guys have seen me paint, you know, gold and what have you often enough. But for completion's sake, I will list the colors that I'm using in the description below. So, you know, if you need to spot what to add to your shopping list, you'll have that information down there. Let's get a look what this looks like when I'm all finished, and we'll go ahead and pop his base on him at the same time too. We'll go for the wow factor with his transition. You ready? Watch this. Ta-da! That's <laughs> the magic of television, right? That's what he's going to look like when he's varnished, got his base, and those few extra details are finished. Although getting them to stay in shot is a bit of a mission. Now, I've normally seen uh, Flesh Terror is done with very dark eyes. I've elected to do quite bright ones. Uh, I use a little slash of white and then some warp lightning contrast. 
uh, just to give me that bright finish. I, I think that looks cool. You know, when you've got a predominantly dark marine, something that stands out really bright, I think it looks neat. Your mileage may vary, in which case, well, you paint your made-up spaceman how you like. <laughs> There's not a correct answer. So hopefully something there was interesting to you. Remember any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comments box below. As always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all the patrons who help keep me ticking over in paint and glue, including producers Alan Nuttall, hello, <laughs> Kyrie Crawford, and Ben Hicks. So thank you very much for your time, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.